Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Yeah, he's a good promise keeper. He fulfills all the promises. He doesn't fulfill a few of them, but all. Such a wonderful God we serve, a great God that we can look up to and say, God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's our walk that matters with God. Walking with God means a lot of things. Understanding his perfect will for your life and uh, educating ourselves through this word and then uh, understanding that we are living in a world that teaches us a lot of lies. And those lies don't really mean much to us if we are not going to believe them. Because the Bible says the, the God of this world is the devil and he portrays a picture. There's all the misery, brings all the misery to mankind and destroys mankind and puts God, put God's name in it and say, this is an act of God. We don't cover insurance. This is an act of God. All the destruction takes place and then we kind of think, well, God is a destroyer. Well, how could he be love if he's a destroyer? No. It's, it's Satan, the destroyer, the arch enemy of God who is all against God, who is all against the human race, is causing all this havoc. I mean, there was somebody who was recently sharing how he was taken up to heaven and then the Lord spoke to him and said, go and tell my people that I'm not the, I'm not the God who is creating all this mess that is in the world because the devil knows that his time is so short that he's messing up the people in the world and placing the name of God on every label of destruction. God did it, God did it, God did it. God is not the author of destruction. He's a God who loves us. He loves us to the extent that he gave us his only begotten son through whom we have come to realization that through him we have life eternal. We have life eternal. And the Christ that we serve, the Lord that we serve, he's a God of love and he has poured out his entire life into our lives and he has caused us to live this life so that we would be so abundantly blessed, walking in the blessing of God, walking in the wisdom of God, and never being afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear that we should be afraid of things. When you see these things happening around, know that your redemption draws near. And look up and say, thank you, Father. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I only make my decisions based on the principles of God's word. I make my decisions according to how he leads me from inside of me. See, most of the time we would hear the voice of God. It may not be an audible voice, but you would have a strong impression inside of you. That's the voice of your conscience. And you would say, yes, I, I, I can hear, I know. I'm hearing the voice of my, my recreated spirit. I'm hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is united together with my spirit and when I hear my spirit speak to me, it's the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit who speaks to me. He guides me and leads me into all truth. I can stand firm and say, oh, thank you, Father, that all the way through you lead me. You know, there are times that we, we, we are so hasty in making decisions. Well, God says, wait, wait. We want to make quick decisions so that, you know, things would happen fast, but then sudden destruction comes upon our bad decisions. God says, wait. The waiting period is interesting sometimes. Maybe it is not interesting for, for some because, well, I have, you mean to say I got to go through the same thing over and over again? I got to same, face the same people over and over again? Well, if you're walking in the spirit, you wouldn't feel it. If you're walking in the flesh, then you would say, I wouldn't want to face the same people over and over again. I wouldn't want to go through the same thing over and over again. And it is too monotonous for me to just live like this. But God says, you are refreshed by me. 
I would send you to certain places and you, you're, you're, if, if you're walking in the flesh, then you would say, I don't like it. I don't want to be here. There are many things that we don't want to do in the natural, but then the comforter, the spirit, the, the, the peace of God that rules us, he, 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 he keeps us in certain places, certain situations, among certain people for the sole purpose that he's working amongst the lives of those people whom you are among to cause them to come to salvation because it is not God's will that any should perish. You are the priest and the prophet in the workplace that you are in. That's, I mean, you're the only witness there. Who, who else could it? I mean, in one place where it says, I'm going to send you amongst people who are so stubborn, so hard-headed. Let me take you to that scripture and show you the scripture from the book of uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, God spoke to Ezekiel and told him, I know the kind of people that I'm sending you to, whom you're going to be with, but they will know that there was a witness amongst them. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel and uh, chapter 2 and verse number 3 and he said unto me son of man I send thee to the children of Israel now when it says children of Israel you can you can you can interpret that scripture God is sending me to certain people and it says I will send you among the children of Israel to a rebellious nation. He's going to take us to some pe people who are rebellious. They're rebellious and hath rebelled against me. They rebelled against the authority of God. So God says, I'm going to put you among rebellious people. Let's see how you turn out. I'm going to send you among rebellious people. You are not supposed to learn their ways. You're supposed to be an influence there. He sends us to certain people among certain places so that we would not learn of those nations the way that they do things, but we are going to portray the gospel. We're going to manifest the light of God. We're going to manifest the love of God. I'm going to send you amongst a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me, against God. These are people who have rebelled against God and I'm sending you to the very people who are rebelling against me. And their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this day. Maybe they are living under a generational curse but God says I'm sending you forth. Verse number four says, there are, for they are impudent children right they are hard faced they are hard faced children uh, hard faced children and I'm going to send you among the impudent children and stiff hearted people you may have come across some of those people you may say well I don't think I should be amongst them God is sending you amongst them how would you know whether that person would be saved just by you being there and sharing the gospel with them. For they are impudent children, stiff hearted, I do send thee unto them and thou shalt say unto them, thus said the Lord. You are going to be the mouthpiece of God. Your witness is most important. You are the mouthpiece of God amongst these people. Now the one who's going to say, this is what the Lord says, this is what the Lord says, this is what the Lord says. They don't know. They don't read the Bible. They don't come to church. They don't have any Christian background. But they can read your life. You are the mouthpiece of God for them. You are the witness. That's why he said, I'm going to send you forth amongst hard-hearted, stiff-necked people. And you will say unto them, thus said the Lord. You're not going to say what they say. You're not going to murmur and complain. They're going to say what they, you know, the devil would want to get you out of the place amongst those people. Most of the time, people just move around from place to place because Satan is after them. And you're afraid to look at their faces because their faces are so hard against you. And, and, and they, they, they make mockery of your presence itself. 
That's not the reason that you should leave them. That shouldn't be. The only reason you should leave is only if the Holy Spirit says it's time for you to leave. You've been here enough. You've been a witness. You obeyed my voice. You've been my mouthpiece. Your presence, your fragrance has been witnessed amongst them. And uh, that's it. And I'm going to take you out. And the next verse says, verse number five. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there had been a prophet amongst them. It's going to be recorded up in heaven that you were the witness of this eternal word, this salvation that God has brought amongst people, right? Amongst the rebellious people. Yet, they shall know that there had been a prophet there. There has been somebody who is carrying the gospel there. And you're the most important person for God to send you there amongst those people. And some of us, we don't even, some of us, we kind of think, well, if we, if, if we say who we are, maybe they might insult us. Who cares if they insult us? That doesn't change the salvation plan of God concerning our lives. Who cares if, if, they are, if they are mad with us? See, all these things that come against you are evil spirit because we are living in hostile surroundings. But there is life in us. There is light in us. There is love in us. The greater one dwells in us. Everything is in us. We are not afraid. Looking at their faces, you can still smile and say, I have no problem. When you make a face of that nature, it doesn't chase me out. It doesn't move me a bit at all. Because I know who I am. I know who has called me and I, I know who has anointed me and I know my destiny. You don't know your destiny. That's why I'm here for you. Maybe you may not say in words, but you still have to have that assurance in your heart. I'm amongst these people for the sole reason is that I might be a witness. That's the character and the nature of God that you're going to portray amongst them. And that's, that's what you, are call, you and I are called for. You and I are called for, wherever we are. In whatever place we are, we're going to share the gospel in every which way we could. Touching lives, healing bodies, bringing wisdom and peace. Maybe some are going through family issues in their lives. You're the correct person that they are in touch with. Because you are a problem solver. You have the solution inside of your heart. And nobody can stop you from witnessing, sharing the gospel, talking to them, giving them the love of God. And it's all such hard-hearted people are the ones who come to Christ. And when they come to Christ, they are all out to go with God. They are all out to serve the Lord. So I believe it's important that you be wherever you are, the witness. You are the witness. You are, you, you are witness. Verse number six, and thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Verse number six, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words. Are you afraid of their words? Are you being intimidated by the words that they speak and their looks? Does it bother you? Does it trouble you? It's not that they have a problem here. It's a problem that you have. You're walking in fear. You're walking in the flesh. We would, sometimes when we are put to test, we would know what our real stuff is, how genuine we are in our faith. When they're mad with us, and do we also get mad with them? When they speak curse words, what comes out of our mouth? We would know what's already installed in our heart is going to come out of our mouth. While the Bible says, bless those who curse you. Do you know that there is power in the, in the words that you speak? There's power in blessing words than in the curse words. Somebody might curse you, but you might say, oh, I'll just bless that man. I'll bless that man. 
Oh, you mean to say, well, we just have to stay calm? Yeah, there'll be times that you might have to confront, but then most of the time you've got to stay calm. Most of the time, because you are going to overcome, and you're the winner after all. You're the winner after all. You will overcome. As long as you preserve yourself and say, God, I'm sent as a priest and a prophet, as a witness, of your holy word. I'm going to share the goodness of God amongst them. Thou, sh thou son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. Thou and thou shalt dwell among scorpions. You will dwell, upon scor you will dwell among scorpions. And what did Jesus say in Luke chapter 10 and verse number 9? You shall tread on scorpions. They might be so mean. They are mean people. See, Satan wants to get you out of the place. But you say, no, wherever my soul treads upon, I have authority in that place. Wherever you go, you're in authority, you're in control. Satan can't get you out of that place. As long as you know who you are in Christ Jesus. Thou dost, uh, thou does dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks. Don't be afraid of their looks. You know how people get intimidated by their looks. I mean by their words, by their actions. Satan can use anything. He would use anything to get you out of the place. He would want you to get, out, get you out of this planet actually. You are, you are a dynamite for the devil. You are a very dangerous character for the kingdom of darkness. So he wants to get you out as soon as possible. Run you out. Or compromise with the people. Well, it's all right. I mean, okay. Church is church. I'll leave everything for Sunday. And then my... See, you've got to understand that you're 24-7. You're in Christ Jesus. You are a witness 24-7. Not when you come to church only. You're a witness wherever you are. You don't want to be discouraged. If you don't want to be discouraged, stand firm and say, I'm not afraid of their looks and their words. I don't want to be carried away by what they say. I'm not moved by what they say. They don't, they're not my final destiny. And none of their curse words are going to touch me. I'm so blessed. And I'll still continue to keep blessing them. I'll continue, I'll just bless them. No, that's not right. I should speak a few words to shut their mouth. But they have more words to keep going on. They keep, I mean, they would keep running their mouth all the time. The best is for you to bless them. And they say, I hate you. You say, I love you. The husbands and wives, they have problems getting along well. They say, I hate you. I still love you. I still love you because we are in covenant. They're in covenant. It's impossible for me to hate you because, well, we, we, did, we, we came together for the sole purpose of being and living together. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them again. The words that come out of your mouth are important. That's the reason you've got to have good words coming out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks, and the only way you can fill the abundance, you can, you can get your heart filled, is by meditating on the scriptures, reading the scriptures, fellowshipping with the Lord, hearing messages, singing songs of worship unto the Lord, and you're, 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 you're preoccupied with spiritual things, and, and you're, you're, you're filling yourself, you're preparing yourself to speak words of God. You're all prepared wherever you are placed into, you are going to shine forth. Love is going to ooze out of you. You don't know how many people you can save. And it'll be recorded, it'll be recorded in heaven when they turn around and say, God, there was nobody you sent to me with the gospel. And God would open the books and say, such and such season at this particular time, you had this person whom you despised. Imagine a slave, a little slave, 
who was able to influence the captain of Syria, a little slave. Hold on to the scripture. Let's go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. You wouldn't want to listen to a slave. They have caught this little girl from Israel. She was a slave. And verse number one. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given him deliverance unto Syria. I believe the Lord that he is talking about here could be the Lord had permitted him to be there and get great deliverance in Syria. And he was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Verse number two says, now this man was a mighty man, a strong man who had lots of deliverance that he had received for Syria, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. I mean, this little maid who was caught in between the enemies, she would have thought, why am I a victim? Why should I be a slave? Why didn't God protect me? Well, there was a purpose because he wanted her to be a dynamite in the house of Naaman. And she waited on Naaman's wife. Verse number three. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Or in other words, he gave she was able to be a witness. There's a prophet in Samaria, that's in Israel. He has the word of the Lord. He has miracle working power. If my master goes there, he's going to be recovered of his problem, of his leprosy. This little maid, who does she think she is? Trying to tell a captain of the enemy she's brought in as a slave but she was a bold witness that's what God wants you to be a bold witness wherever you are she went and told the mistress if you only go to meet this prophet if, if my master goes and meets the prophet there surely he will recover and one went in and told and the mistress went in and told saying thus and thus said the maid is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, go. So the king of Syria gave a letter. This was going to happen on top level. From the king of Syria to the king of Israel. We're going to get this man healed because he's my important, he's one of my important people. But see, all this happened because a slave who didn't consider herself as a slave, who considered herself as a witness for Christ, or witness to Jehovah, Almighty God. And if you read the whole story, you could see he was such an arrogant man, but God touched his life and he was completely made. His flesh was brought back to normal and he, his, he was so clean. In verse number, in all this, you can go home and read the story. But, and verse number 14 we find then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. First he refused. He said, I'm not going to go into this dirty water in Jordan and dip myself, me being a captain of, a captain of Syria, the king of Syria. I wouldn't want to come to my enemy's ground and do all that. But all, he overcame all that, all that, all that, all he overcame. You can go through and see how mad he was with the situation and but still, finally he obeyed the voice of God. And he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God, his flesh came back, uh, came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. It was a, it was a, a new creation 
a type and shadow when we prof- when bring it understanding it through by revelation in the new testament he became a child of god he became a, a honorable man who was willing to serve god he became a, a different i mean being in the enemy's camp now this man is saved nobody can say anything about this leprosy i mean they would say none of us would have ever we do our gods don't heal us like this coming out of leprosy and bringing our flesh like a little child they would have never experienced that but what was the initial in the initial stages what what where did it start it all sparked through that little maid who was brought as a slave wherever you are however they treat you don't ever forget that the greater one dwells inside of you than he that is in the world you are there for a purpose there's an eternal destiny in somebody's life that you are in you have been brought into that position and place to bring that person out of the kingdom of darkness and to bring this person out and bring this person into the marvelous light and verse number 15 the next thing he says when he came out of the water then he was totally and completely healed and he returned to the to the man of god and he he and his, all his company and came and stood before him and he said behold now i know that there is no god in all the earth there's no god now i know because now he was fully convinced with the miracle do you know something you have healing your hands are anointed to lay hands upon people that they can be healed oh i don't want how could i heal them you have the power of god inside of you the same holy ghost that lives inside of me lives inside of you every every one of us are anointed to lay hands on the sick that they may recover every one of us have the power of god to cast out demons and you probably think well i don't know whether it's going to happen or not i'm not very sure i'm not anointed it's not your feelings it's what it's what you believe i believe you need to wake up in the morning every day and say lord i thank you for healing hands i thank you for making me my my mouth a mouthpiece of god i thank you lord for the mind of christ that i have the wisdom of god that i can that i can touch people with i'm important to wherever i go lord i carry the peace of god i carry the presence of god with me i have the joy of the lord in me wherever there is sorrow joy that's bubbling out of me that can cause things to happen you're not just an ordinary person you're a power house you're a power house you're full of the life of god don't despise yourself you're full of the life of god this little maid if she had thought if she had been if she would have been complaining and murmuring and grumbling probably she would have been in a worse state i suppose the the the, the captain would have gone home the very first thing he would have done is promoted this little one and said from today onwards you're not you're not a slave you're my daughter i suppose that would have happened you're no longer going to be because i serve the same god that you serve we're going to both serve the god and we are going to do it together we're going to we're going to bring this word of god to the whole of syria because i'm a very highly influential man his leprosy has been completely made whole i don't think that slave would have ever remained a slave anymore they would have they would have adopted her and said today onwards we're not going to call you a slave you're going to eat from our table you're going to sit with us because you introduce us to the god of the whole universe there is no god but the god of israel now therefore i pray take a blessing of thy servant well if you really understand that god heals us not because we want to pay him back he heals us because that's his nature he's jehovah rafa and the man of god didn't take any money for the sole reason that he wanted to send the message of grace to syria but we find the other man he's the later on we find that 
uh, the, the, the servant of the man of God, he just took all, he took advantage of that situation. But the most important thing is God's healing is his grace, his unmerited favor. His blessing is, is free of charge. He gives us all things richly to enjoy. That's what the Bible says. So here we find, now I know that there is no God in all the earth. There is no God. He was fully convinced that the God of Israel is a God who is truly God. So you are placed in certain places, you are put in certain peop- among certain people, never be afraid. Don't be afraid of their looks and don't let the devil run you out of the place. You say, devil, I have come to run you out of this place. I have come to run you out of this place. It's time that the kingdom of God be preached in such a manner that they would have true signs and wonders that would take place even in the lives of every one of you. They would come to you for prayer and say, please pray for me, I'm having an issue, I'm having a trouble, I, I need you. You're a prayer house, you're a power house, you're a house of peace, what not? And we kind of think, oh, I'm just a little slave brought amongst these people and I feel so miserable and nobody cares for me and they just look down upon me. And there'll come a time that they will look up to you. The scripture says so. You shall be so blessed that people will, nations will look up to you. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 says, it says the nations shall look up to you. You're a blessed man. And it shall come to pass if thou shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe to do all his commandments which I commanded thee this day that the Lord thy God will set you set thee on high above all nations of the earth. The people of the nations or the, or the place that you are in working they're all going to talk about you. Maybe in any which way but you're going to be the talk of the town. And this guy has healing power in his hand. Get somebody healed in your workplace. And they will say, my, this guy is, he's a, uh, maybe they may not want to receive you immediately, but still for all, they'll be, they'll be I mean, they would, they would say, oh my God, this man has some power in him. So I, I assure you, Stand your ground and see the goodness of the Lord happening in your life. Let's go to the book of uh, Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. God has called you to be the witness. Isaiah chapter 44. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, 43 first. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 10, you are my witnesses, said the Lord. You are my witnesses, said the Lord. My servant whom I have chosen, you're a chosen servant of God. You're a son of God who serves your father, not as a, he's, and your father is not a slave driver. You're serving him. You love him. You're willing to obey him. That you may know and believe me, my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. He said, I'm, you are going to be a witness and you would know for sure, you would know me and believe me and understand that there was no one before me, none after me. I am who said I am. You're his witness. You're his witness. Verse number 11. I, even I, am the Lord and besides me there is no savior. I'm sure this should assure you 
that you are a very strong tool of God. That he can use you wherever you are, in whatever situation you are. Moreover, there is none besides him who is the savior. You can always move around in whatever situation you are, you can still say, I know Jesus Christ is my savior. As much as he saved me, he can save you. There's nobody else. There's none besides me. There's none besides me. I, I know I have come to, un, come to the grips of understanding. I have declared and have saved and have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses. Once again, you are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. You're a witness. You are the witness of his resurrection. How do you know that? I was not alive 2,000 years ago to know that Jesus rose again on the third day. But the Holy Spirit inside of you, he is the same spirit who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He now dwells in you. Put this scripture up in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Romans 8 and verse 11. Romans 8 and verse 11. Right? But the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you or dwells in you. If the same spirit, the spirit that raised Jesus up on the third day is in you. He dwells in you. The same spirit went down to hell after three days and raised Jesus up from the dead. He that raised Christ, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Your dying body is always been, that word quicken means it's refreshing and giving life. The spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is dwelling inside of you. This is a very strong healing scripture for your body. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in you for the sole purpose of giving life to your dying body. Your body wants to die. Your body wants to be slothful. Your body wants to give up. And the spirit of the Lord, if you depend on the spirit of the Lord, he's going to give you life. Many times I have spoken this scripture over my body and I've got recovered. I've been healed. The devil attacks us with sicknesses and diseases and all kinds of things. I said, Lord, I thank you. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that's a very powerful spirit to go down to hell all together in the midst of all the demons, the host of demons, and push them all aside and raise Jesus from the dead. The same spirit dwells inside of me now. And he quickens or gives life to my mortal body, my dying body. My body wants to say I'm sick. But the Holy Spirit inside said, no, you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. If I can raise Jesus from the dead, what's concerning your healing? What's cancer? What's migraine headaches? What is it to me? Nothing. I can just, in a moment of a time, heal that. It's nothing. So when you look at sickness, oh, this is too too much for me to bear. You can say, Lord, I thank you. If, if the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now dwells in me, then I'm not afraid at all. I don't care. I'm not afraid at all. Nothing at all moves me. I know that I'm healed. As long as I'm in this body, it's properly furnished, kept clean, holy, healed, enjoying the goodness of God. You don't have to be Saying, oh my God, I got a bad body. I, have, I, 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 I mean, I, I'm, I'm so allergic to this and that. Your words are stout against the Lord and he can't heal you. I, I cannot eat this stuff. I don't know. I, I, I don't think it, it, it agrees with my body. I get sick often. I have all kinds of reasons I give why I get sick. But I can give you one reason why you can walk 
in holiness and in health. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. That's why you can live holy. That's the reason you can live in health. That's good enough. Why can't live clean amongst these unclean people? It's not a problem with the unclean people around you. It is you don't believe with your mouth. You don't confess what you believe in your heart. You need to believe what you... It's important what you believe that you declare out of your mouth. Not just an ima- I just imagine things maybe somewhere down the line. Yeah, I think I should be able to. Yeah, but why don't you declare some of these scriptures? These are powerful scriptures. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me to give my dying body life. He dwells in me for this purpose. My body wants to get sick, but the Holy Spirit inside of me says, no, you don't have to be sick. The body wants to give up, but the Holy Spirit says, no, you still have life. I'm not through with you yet. God wants to satisfy you with a long life. Psalm 91 is a wonderful psalm full of promises right from the word, uh, right from the First word, first uh, verse. But verse 16, verse number one says, that's the secret is verse number one. Let's read verse number one. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of Almighty. It's dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, spending time with the Lord under the shadow of Almighty. And then down the line you find lots of good things. And verse number 16 when you come to, the same scripture, Psalm 91, with long life, not short life, will I satisfy him. You want to live long and be satisfied also, then you better make up your mind to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. And what is the secret place of the Most High God? Is to stay in the word of God is to love him, is to walk in the truth, fellowship, stay away from strife. It's too luxurious for us to live. We cannot afford to live in strife. Stay away from strife and walk in peace with one another. That's the best. Stay away from those who try to agitate you and make you feel bitter against them. You can say, you can try your best to make me feel bitter against you, but it shall never come out of my mouth. Because I only have sweet waters coming out of my mouth. I don't have bitter things coming out of my mouth. In James chapter number three and verse number seven, it says, you don't have the next verse, But the tongue no man can tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Now it's talking about a natural person. But the next verse says, Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men who are made in the similitude of God. The next verse, Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. Brethren, these things ought not to be. It ought not to be. Blessing and cursing cannot come out from the same mouth. The next verse. That the fountain sent forth at the same place sweet water and bitter waters. No. You are supposed to be sending forth sweet waters out of your mouth. You're not a bitter person. You're not living. Nobody. You might say, I I get agitated. I get mad because of so and so. To be around so and so. To be around so and so should not distract you because you are the light of the world. You are the witness. You, you You have the love of God oozing out of you. How can you walk in bitterness? How can you? 
It cannot a fountain can never send forth from the same place sweet and bitter waters. It has to be sweet and sweeterly. You, 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 I mean, we are emotional, we have emotions, we, 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 we. It's not that we cannot handle ourselves. We cannot think that we can't handle ourselves. Well, at one time we couldn't handle ourselves, but now we can. Because we have the spirit of self-control. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. A mind that has self-control. You can control yourself. You're different to other people. You, can't, you cannot try to say, I'm... Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm just a mere man. Yeah, you are just a mere man, but you're also the son of God. You're the son of God. So don't blame your emotions. I mean, every one of us, we have emotions, but at the same time, we have the love of God in us by, which, by whom we can control our emotions. We can say, okay, I'm supposed to get mad in this situation. I mean, I have the same feelings. Feelings don't change. I mean, we have feelings. People are bitter towards us. People are mad. People, get, people make us angry. But we just say, Lord, help me. I thank you, Lord, for the peace. I thank you, Lord, for the peace. I thank you, Lord, for the peace that you give me. So, I'm a witness. Wherever I go, I'm a witness for Christ. And... Uh, Going back to Isaiah chapter number 11, I'm sorry, chapter number 43 and verse number 12 we read. Yeah. Ye therefore, verse 13, ye therefore, uh, ye, before the day was I am. Before the day was I am. See, God is ahead of everything. God is ahead of everything. I've declared, or verse, verse 13, yeah, I, before the day was I am. He and there is none that can deliver you out of my hand. I will work and who shall uh, let it? Thus said the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sakes, I have sent to Babylon and I have brought down the nobles and the Chaldeans. The Babylon is talking about the world, the system of the world, and the Chaldean talks about the, the education of the world and the confusion of the world. Remember, in the midst of all this, he is still God. And he has sent you amongst these people for you to be a witness. Chapter 44, I mean, Isaiah is a beautiful book. Verse by verse, we could just go on and on and on. Verse, Isaiah 40, 44 and verse number 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told you from that time and have declared it that you are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? If there is no God, I know not of any. God says, I don't know of any other God. I'm the only one, and I'm the only one who could save people. I'm the Savior, and I live inside of you to save others. I'm there with you to save others. Your life is important because I want to save others. I want others to know through your life. You remember one thing, every one of us who we ought to be reward conscious. God has rewards laid up for us. And as we do his will, as we walk in the truth and do according to what he desires and what he wants done through our life, those rewards are going to come into your life. God is a rewarder of all those who diligently seek him. So you seek him to be a witness. Quickly, we're going to close. Before that, I want to go to another scripture from the book of uh, Acts chapter number 
Acts chapter number 8. Acts chapter number 8. Now, we find in, if you read the whole chapter, you can find that there was a man called Philip. He was preaching the gospel amongst, uh, in Samaria, and people heard and they saw the miracles that took place in verse number 6. It says, And people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying aloud came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and they were that were lame and healed. And there was great joy in that city. How does joy come into a city when, these, when the gospel is preached? How does joy come to a nation when the gospel is preached? And this is how the devil is trying to hold people from not speaking the truth. Don't talk the gospel, talk anything, talk about the, talk about the weather, talk about politics, talk about religion, talk about him, but don't talk about Jesus. We don't want to hear because their minds are blinded. The Bible says, the God of this world has blinded their minds. In 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, it says, quickly read that, in whom the God of this world, who is the God of this world? The devil has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest if they believe the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the devil keeps their mind blocked. You want to share the gospel with them, they attack you. Well, I'm trying to sit and tell you who the creator is. I'm talking to you about Jesus. I'm talking to you about what Jesus did for me. I don't want to hear anything about you. I mean, you're a crazy guy. You keep Jesus with you. I mean, this was me. I was too. When I was friendly with my wife, and then uh, when she spoke about Jesus to me, I said, to hell with you and your Jesus. I'll go and catch another fish. I left her. But God had a plan for my life because I, my mind was blinded. And when it came, and it came to pass on a day like this that the Spirit of God touched my life and I gave my heart to the Lord and everything changed. That was in 83. Thank God for His grace. In whom the God of this world has blinded them, blinded their minds, who believe not, lest the light of the gospel. So what do we do? Keep on, keep on being a witness to them. Because we know the greater one dwells in us than he that is in the world. And the light that we have, we're gonna just keep shining. You can't, you can't forcefully bring anybody to the kingdom of God, but you can still be a witness wherever you are without changing your character. What people do is, well, now, if I have to get, if people are gonna persecute me like this, I stop talking about Jesus, let me talk about the weather and talk about religion, talk about politics and talk about something else. And I'll just go along with them and agree with them and just live with them and that's not the way God wants you to, that's what the devil wants you to do, he wants to neutralize your faith. Now you have, you, you have great faith in the creator God. He doesn't want you to neutralize your faith. He wants you to share your faith. Talk about Jesus. So while good things are happening in this city while this preacher was preaching and all of a sudden he was taken to another place. He was translated or he was supposed to go down and the Lord spoke to him and said, go down to the desert. Well, good things are happening here because there was something that the Lord wanted to do. In verse number 26, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go forward, go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is the desert. I mean, here good things are happening here, but the angel of the Lord came and said, Now go to the desert. And the next verse, 
And he arose and went, and behold, a man, an Ethiop, uh, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch, a man of authority, great authority. This man, he was, he had come to Jerusalem, he's just taking some of the scriptures and he's trying to read and understand the book of Isaiah. He's trying to understand, but he couldn't understand nothing. And thereafter, God took this man to the desert and met with him in the chariot. And in verse number, chapter 8 and verse number 33, Verse number 30, uh, all this he was reading. Then Philip opened his mouth, verse 35, and began at the same scriptures and preached unto him Jesus. He was reading the book of Isaiah, but Philip was able to bring the book of Isaiah to the present day, Jesus. Every time you read the scriptures in the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah. Now he was reading the book of Isaiah, this is what he was saying. Verse number 30, 33, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away and who declared his generation? And all this, he was reading all the, and, and the eunuch answered and said in verse 34, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speak this prophet? Who speak, about whom is he speaking? And then verse number 35, Philip opened his mouth from the same scriptures and he spoke about Jesus. Jesus the Savior, the way, the truth, and the life. You live the life of Jesus, you talk the life of Jesus, you just, everything means to you now. You're different because Jesus means everything to you. You live the life of Jesus now. You're not trying to act, you're trying to pretend, you're, you're, you're being just yourself because you've got the spirit of Christ inside of you. You've got the spirit of Christ inside of you and you're just yourself now. And that's the way. And this man, he heard the gospel and he was baptized, verse number 36 and verse number 37. He believed in Jesus Christ as a son of God. And what do you think this eunuch would have done? The Ethiopian. He would have gone to Ethiopia. Being a man of influence, he would have shared Jesus he said, I went to Jerusalem. He would, he would just go and say, I went to Jerusalem and I just got some scripts out from there. And then I was while I was reading, this man came and he explained to me, and my life is now full of life. I'm a changed person. I'm living the life of Jesus. I don't know how to hate people. I don't know how to, how to be mean to people. I don't know now. I just know one thing, that he saved my life and I'm going to talk about him all the way through. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name. We are witnesses of Christ Jesus for the sole purpose of bringing the good news to the hearts and lives of the people. Lord, many are troubled in this world today with all the happenings. What's all this destruction if there's a loving God? But we know that our God is not the one and all these are labeled, all the destruction is labeled as God, acts of God, we are not responsible for. But we know who are responsible, demon spirits, evil, wicked men, who heed to the voice of demons and who create all these riots. And I pray, Lord, let these riots turn around to be a revival of God. Let there be people who will turn around in whatever place, wherever they are, that your peace is going to dwell and the gospel of peace shall go out amongst the people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're working your work of grace amongst us. Wherever you take us, Lord, you're taking us with healing hands. Wherever you take us, Lord, you're taking us with the wisdom of God. Wherever you take us, Lord, we are going with the peace of God, the love of God, the joy of the Lord. And Lord, we shall be your witnesses. We are not afraid of their looks. We are not afraid of their words. We are not going to be distracted by how they react 
to the gospel. And we are going to be firm with what we believe in. And we would say Jesus is Lord. And you are Lord. And you have proved over and over again that your loving and your healing hands are extended to the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This gospel shall be preached to all the world. And the works of darkness shall be destroyed. And your kingdom be established here on earth. We give you the praise, the glory and the honor due to your name. In Jesus' name. Amen.